Okay, so this next bit, we're going to clean up this code, introduce the repository pattern, uh, so that the getting of data from the database is separate from the using of the data from the database. So first things first. Age old question. Do I just start a new class in here? Yeah, person repository and just start writing my code in here or do I move it out to its own file immediately? Um, when you're doing stuff uh, in a professional environment you usually have some additional tools like ReSharper and um, I think Telerik has just code and they provide tools on lines of hey move this class to another file so it's no big deal but you don't have those tools here this is a vanilla Visual Studio 2015 so it's a little bit involved to create a class. My personal feeling is I like to have all the code on one screen. When I'm surgically removing classes around, I tend to have them either in the same file or in a split screen situation. I'll go with the split screen for this one. I could use add new item, but there's also a shortcut for class. Speeding up some video here, um, just creating the new classes and arranging them on my screen so that I can see all of them at the same time. So repository, uh, we're going to bring back a list of something, people, person, person, and get all is the verb I'm going to use. I'm going to add the noun. What I'm doing here is grabbing all the code and moving it over. And then the code that it does something with the data, I'm moving back out. The screen is a little bit too cramped, so I'm moving the tab over to make it just two tabs. I now have a person repository that I can get a list of persons. These lists are um, system.specialized.collection, I guess. Um, which one is it? Collections, sure, generic. Yeah, that's where they are. Um, and I need to call that from over here. And oh, um, I could either go with new person repository dot get all persons. This is what we would do uh, if you're using dependency injection and if you are using unit testing type stuff uh, because I'm not covering those concepts yet and I may never get around to those. I'm gonna go with a static instead. So let's make that static. I have a cat attacking my leftover oatmeal right now and is blocking my view of the monitor. Hold, please. Okay, having got our list of persons for each of our person and persons. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is introduce the person class over here as well. And I'm going to use Visual Studio to populate the properties for me. So var person equals new person. Person dot, I'm going to call this person ID is that. Now this doesn't exist yet. Let me bring this guy back over to here, move to previous tab group. Um, I can go in and say, yo, create me a property. And that's what it's going to look like. That looks good. So do it. There we go. And that got set. Now it's it would figure out, oh hello, reader.getint32 came out as an object. That ain't right. Int. I'm very surprised. I would have thought that it would have figured out that that was an integer. Let's try it with this one. Person dot name equals that. And here generate person dot name. Once again, 
Oh, it's because I can't compile. The code's not compiling, so it doesn't, it's not able to infer the types because it got lost somewhere up over here. And, okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, you are a string. And this one over here, I'm just going to set you up first. Public decimal height in meters. Get set. Uh, if you're overwhelmed, don't worry about access levels. Just make everything public. You can figure out the private, internal, protected stuff later. And person dot height in meters. So I'm going to make this code a little bit better. Uh, person dot height in meters equals, and then if this thing is true, then I want this thing. Otherwise, I want this thing. See if that works. So far, so good. So we have our person, and then we can say uh, we need a list to return it in. So the list needs to come out probably about over here outside of this while loop because we're adding to it in that while loop so var return uh, list because new list of person and list dot add person and then return list I could have also created that out here and returned it out here. Uh, not a problem. So one more thing we can do here is um, we could use object initialization. Does it give me a little thing for that? It does not. Well, let's do this hard way. Doot, 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 doot. This is my colon and that move that, move that, change all of these guys to commas. Don't need the last one. And how does that look? Perfect. Almost perfect. Extra lot, extra white space. So here's another um, uh, quickie. Uh, let's see, advanced format document control k control d so if i have this somewhere else and then i just go control k d and that reformats the document so we are now returning oh why is this guy having a problem this guy's having a problem because it needed that okay that's good are we building ooh build failed all right so this is a problem that would hit people a lot. This null has no particular type. The ternary operator needs both of the operands to be of the same type. So, put a decimal question mark. Null around it. And why is that implicitly convert that? Oh, because this is not nullable. There. there we go. Let's try that again. Person ID does not exist in this context. All right, so now we're back over here, and so now we can use person dot person ID. Though, no. okay, I'll just write that. Person dot name. Person dot height in meters. Semicolon. Maybe we should put those on separate lines. And I still have a squiggly. Why do I have a squiggly? Another thing is expected. Wait, Control K D. Ah, so that class lines up there. So we need another one for the namespace. All good. Build. Good. 
Let's see this happening. Let's go to about maybe here, there. Uh, what is our list of breakpoints? So D, W, so Control Alt B or Alt D, W, B. We only have one breakpoint set. That's good. Uh, Auto hide is enabled. All right, good. And run. So we are here um, at that spot. We are about to create a new person. Person comes back. Drill into that a little bit. Yep, looks good. And the rest of the code should be good. So let's get rid of the breakpoint. Here, diagnostic tools, I really don't need you. Oh, is it going to crash? Did it stop at a breakpoint again? Breakpoints. No. That's weird. What is it doing? Where is it? It's not paused. It's pauses. Oh, duh. <laughs> All right, so let's fix that. Want keep press after the whole thing is done. All right, Alt D W B. No breakpoints. Good and run. Boom. We're good. And commit. <laughs> 